What's going on, everyone, and welcome to Numbers Therapy. So a bit of background. We created Numbers Therapy originally to talk through the macro and bring on and showcase our experts in Metaverse HQ, and more specifically, so everyone can understand how all the big pieces fit together to make better decisions with NFTs and other investments using a balanced perspective, to learn about or from some of our people in the community, and to learn about different areas and opportunities out there, including different ways of thinking. More on Metaverse HQ, which we call MVHQ. MVHQ is the top Web3 trading and networking community, and we showcase traders, analysts, builders, and a variety of other rising experts in the space. All right, GMGM, GM, and welcome everyone to Numbers Therapy, episode 48. Today's episode titled Narratives of Web3. Here at Numbers Therapy, we're talking through the macro, the operational, financial, technical, trading-based, and other dimensions of Web3 to help us all elevate while, of course, having some good laughs along the way, and I'm confident we will get some of those today. For everyone who's live, please please be sure to ask questions. If they're intro questions, more advanced, just drop them in and we'll be sure to weave them in along the way. Want to make sure everyone uh, is following along full conversation. Lastly, Numbers Therapy is rated NFA, as in none of what you hear in here is financial advice. So without further ado, and on to today's guest and episode. As I think we can all agree, Web3 holistically has a narrative. Web3 maxis have a vantage point on what this is. Web2 normies have a vantage point. Within Web3, there are a series of narratives, both at the meta or category level, and then within specific projects within Web3. How do we sum this all up? How do we methodically distill what's been the narrative to date overall and where we currently stand? What trends are we seeing across Web3 categories and across projects? And more importantly, what constitutes a good narrative of projects for now and into the future? This guest comes from a really cool background where narratives are very familiar to him and as a result are something he very much pays attention to at all levels. Just like many of us, he started his NFT entrance similar time, but views certain elements often through a different prism, one of comic relief and variance, which often informs his investment decisions. For those closer to MBHQ, we know him as one of our resident comedians, and also know that we're not fooled by that veneer, that there's a methodical expert level trader and investor underneath there as well. Very happy to have this guy as a friend and as a colleague. Please, everyone, welcome Ryan to the stage. Everyone, Ryan, how are you doing today? I am doing great, and I want to make sure that I can announce here today, right now, that I just bought Pudgy Penguins for uh, uh, ten million dollars. So uh, I'm the new <laughs> CEO. So you're interviewing the CEO, and no, I'm just kidding. No. Alpha, right. alpha on episodes always, not always in the way that we anticipate, and uh, <laughs> that would be the example of it. Um, so let's frame up with some background. I let in a little bit, of course, in, in kind of introing you in the episode, but I want to give everyone who's listening a little bit more color on you. So, um, you know, college, post-college focus, how did your career start off? How did you eventually find your way into Web3? Can you share all that background with everyone? Yeah, so uh, it all started uh, in college, I guess. So I, um, I originally went to school to be a business major. I wanted to... I had this I you know, the ideas of grandeur, you know, to make money and to start your own business and things like that. But uh, I quickly started to kind of lean into my loves and my like like the big passions. Um, and I, I'm I'm a pretty passionate guy. Uh, and so I ended up switching my major uh, sophomore year to uh, electronic media and broadcasting, uh, which um, had a program or a, rather an emphasis with a lot of documentary film work stuff. So I essentially went to school for documentary film work and, and, and really loved documentary film work and as well as narrative production. Uh, so that's kind of what I graduated with my degree in. Um, and I quickly realized that like that degree, that field, unless you move over to LA, which I wasn't really ready to do, uh, is something that you really got to go into the news industry with. And I'll be honest with you, I could not just sit behind a camera and be a cameraman or something like that. I'm a much more a bigger creative than that in my head. So I've kind of um, decided to pivot and said, okay, well, I went to school, so I have a degree. And the, <laughs> a lot of jobs just care that you have a degree, for God's sakes. Uh, 
and I was able to get a job uh, in uh, education technology. So my 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 real professional background is I was in sales. I was a account manager for um, Google, um, uh, an Apple partner for a little bit, uh, several different education technology firms um, that are, are bigger names, CDW. Things like that uh, for about six or seven years, and I, I kind of ran that racket and decided to take my my you know my my degree and do those things kind of on the side or or as passion projects, personal projects instead of money incentives uh, because I was making a lot more money uh, in the sales industry. So uh, all that led me to and in, in the whole time I was really focusing a lot on marketing as well, uh, doing a lot of marketing within with one of the sales roles. So that led me to um, working for a Web3 company. So kind of through Top Shot, actually, I was able to, to link up with a company that was doing uh, physical collectibles, uh, fractionalized on the blockchain. Uh, the company, they no longer do that. They're still around. They do something else, but it's called Dibs. And I actually came on as their community manager uh, and did that for about a year. And... Um, I've just been enthralled in the Web3 space ever since. Uh, so uh, I've been here since January of 2000. And uh, I, you know, I, I consider myself an OG. I don't know. Awesome background. And so, so before we head in the road, uh, down the road of Web3 here, I'm going to ask like a little bit of a funny slash weird question here, which is, sounded like, so you started off kind of in your passion, like I want to make some money, right? So, in, and, and eventually into NFTs, like a lot of people. So, you know, the question, which is a little bit funny is, does, does profit motive and earning enough make anything more fun? Like, like if, if anybody was totally indifferent and there was like an opportunity that existed where you could make a lot of money, could anything become fun at that point? I know it's easy with like, you know, with, with NFTs where a lot of people liked cards before Top Shot and liked collectibles and liked games and all. Okay, that's like pretty clear, right? These are things. Be Can anything become really, really fun though? If like the profit motive is there? So I don't think so. I think there's a, probably a lot of people out there who hate their job and make a lot of money. I, I don't hate my job. Um, I, I, won't, I won't say who I work for um, now uh, in the private sector, but uh, I, it's not like a passion of mine. And I make, I make more money now than I've ever made in a job before my life. And just because I make that much money does not mean I love it. So I don't know. But then again, I you know uh, was never huge into sports cards until there was a monetary incentive. I wasn't, don't get me wrong, I played video games my whole life, but I wasn't huge into collecting video games until there was a monetary incentive attached to it. Um, comic books the same way. I, I feel like, mon like being able to make money off something does make things fun, but I'm sure, there, I'm not going to name professions, but I'm sure there are people who are like, trust me, it's not fun at all. Um, and then, you know, I still make money but uh i mean i was thinking of this and you know obviously you said we'll get into web three stuff in a second but uh, coming from a gaming background and and just being a quote unquote gamer i feel like that's one of like the big disconnects right now is play to earn gaming i don't think play to earn gaming uh is going to be as big of a deal as everyone thought it would be and obviously you know some people be like well duh we've already tried it and it worked but i think even further into the uh into the future, I don't think gamers are incentivized by making money a lot of the times. I think most people want to play video games to escape, to, you know, they, they worked all day at Walmart and they want to go play a game to just relax. And I think play to earn, a lot of people within the play to earn, like, mind frame think that everyone's just going to want to jump into some, you know, capitalistic economy where... You know, the, their passion and their, their uh, you know, love for video games is going to make them money. Um, I, I know a lot of people who are, who are just like, no, like, stay away from me. Like, don't do that. I don't care about that. I would just like to sit here at night for this four hours that I have of not working and just, and just play video games. And I think one of the big things, like, to kind of, like, uh, go along with that is just look at, like, GameStop, right? Like. Like I, I, I've been playing it is in the little teaser that we did for for the show, but I've been playing Tears of the Kingdom like nonstop, and that game costs seventy bucks. But if you take it to GameStop right now and turn it in, it's gonna be twenty dollars. And I think like that's the, the whole reason GameStop's been around for as long as it has 
is because they're able to do that because gamers don't care about getting maximum profit. They go to eBay, right, if they wanted to do that. But I really think that that that, that gamers don't want to uh, don't care about making money, so to speak. So I think uh, there's one of the just you just you, to to go along with what you said. Like, can anything be fun if you're making money? And 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 I think that there are a lot of things that that aren't. I, I totally didn't think that it would that, that we'd necessarily go here in the conversation, but it's super super interesting because I wonder if it's almost with like you know play to earn gaming if it's a lot of folks not like wanting to stay out of their own way for lack of a better description right like i love the gaming world i'm in right now i just want to play the game and oh yeah by the way i know if we add profit motive to this and incentive forget about like ruining the the overall ecosystem which is maybe a thing also i know my attention is now going to shift from being this like relaxing thing where i don't have to stress and it can escape like you were saying and everything else to now i have to like stress and now it's about like profit motive let alone whatever going on within, within like, the, you know, the, the gaming economy and the, in the system as well. Like, I wonder if that's part of it too. I, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah. Like, Oh, oh, if we don't raid three times this week, darling, we're not going to have enough money to afford to, yeah. to pay our bills or something like that. Yeah. Just more, more again, I, I'm not, I'm not anti-capitalist by any means, but I think that there's like a, I don't know. There's like a, definitely a capitalistic, like uh, uh dystopian kind of, outlook that i think we kind of get into a euphoria about how great the metaverse is and web3 is that like a lot of this stuff like again uh the whole web3 idea the whole um metaverse you know comes from ready player one and i don't know if any of you have read that book or you know maybe seen the movie it's not supposed to be a good world like they don't live in like the best world and <laughs> it, it came from a dystopian kind of universe so I just I, I think that sometimes we just get a little excited because we, we are making money and we are that we just assume everyone else feels the same way or is going to feel the same way one day when I think that there are just yeah it's that we're different people and different people seek different things for for different reasons and yeah so sorry right. to go off on a tangent there <laughs> unprecedented unprecedented numbers therapy pathway but usually we come with like a pretty clear sense of like what direction I'm going to take the conversation and, and things are going to go and they kind of chime in along the way but. Um, I think we're going to take this in like a a slightly different direction today based on what you're saying. And then we'll kind of go from there, which is, I I think, I think what's somebody behind the scenes, by the way, right? Pick any project, any NFT, anything, you know, pick top shot, pick, uh, you know, some of these games, somebody is making sausage behind there too, in terms of actually creating these things. Right. So for every person that exists, that's like, this is an escape for me. Right. People there who are th- sitting there who are like, this is not an escape for me because this is my day job, right? Like I work on this. I work at Blizzard. I work at wherever, you know, this is not an escape for me at all. Any Anytime I hear the word gaming, I cringe and I just want to go home and work and do the opposite of gaming. I just want to be not in, you know, the, the digital end or something like that. So what I'm really trying to think through here with you, a lot of us have spent a lot of time and attention on programs and like what's going to get people excited beyond just like the profit motive here like we started and what's going to get people to latch into you know not just any given mint there's an opportunity that that exists but i really want to be a part of like digital assets and that whole ecosystem and the escape that exists i wonder if there's like a reframing that exists here a little bit to some extent right like what are, what are people running away from why they want this escape fixed rigid parameters of what a day job is, whatever the heck that is, right? That happens to be between the hours of nine and five or whatever version it is for them. And now they get to go into this free thing that doesn't have fixed hours and they can explore however they want. And there's no pressure that exists and, and all that kind of good stuff. So I'm wondering if like, if there's a framing exercise, this concept that you said of escape, like, I, man, like you are a screenwriter and you must, you just naturally must have nailed it. But I wonder how important that word is people to drive the narrative of on onboarding and on ramping more people into web three. You have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I, I, I think the way we frame society the way we've built society is that you work and then you have a little bit of time every day to do things, sometimes things you want to do if you're lucky enough and sometimes things you have to do. Uh, and, and that aren't that isn't work, and I think that we've kind of become like a hustle, like the the and, and, and you know I'm speaking in, in the NFT industry, obviously, and then crypto and and in finance and stuff. There's a lot of mind frame, you know, rise and grind, and 
you got to be grinding, you got to be doing this, you got to be doing this. I think the normal everyday person mind frame isn't like that. I think a lot of people have been have been uh, kind of given this world where it's like you work 40 hours a week and you go home and that's it. Uh, and so I, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people just want to escape and get out of it. So, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's like the mind frame uh, a lot of the times when it comes to like things like that. And, and uh, I've kind of lost the thread there, but get me back. Yeah, I'll, I'll get you. Don't, don't worry about this. But, but two years ago, Ryan, okay, one and a half, two years ago, okay, we, as in you and myself and everyone listening live right now and probably many other people who are going to listen recorded later, um, were sitting in a shower with your laptop open because you didn't want to miss something. Yeah. You didn't want this opportunity to mint or something else. So it said differently, you were around the clock, 12 hours at a time, 14 hours at a time, arguably working more, in quotes, than you did at a nine-to-five job, and yet that was fun. Like, why is that fun? And why is working nine to five at whatever else not fun? And how do you extract that so that other people who are not in Web3 right now would, would, would love that vision and connect to it and, and, and want that? Why, why is that so fun? Why is it fun sitting with my laptop in the shower being excited? Is it because there's always something exciting around the corner and there's always something weird in addition to profit motive, in addition to the game that kind of exists within here, in addition to the community? Like wh what is that? What is that formula? What is that recipe? I think it's a degenerative thing. And, and, and I say that with like a love. I think that, you know, your salary is promised to you, right? You're going to make $60,000 a year. Sure, maybe you have a bonus incentives or blah, 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 blah. But for the most part, you're working a job where you already know how much you're going to get paid. And then with things like NFTs, and especially, you know, a year and a half, two years ago, we were sitting around and we didn't want to miss an opportunity because we knew at any given time we could quote unquote hit the jackpot. So I think that there is a, uh, probably it's a chemical thing. It's a, you know, the brain chemical wants, uh, knows that if we stay and sit, that we will be rewarded, uh, monetarily. And, and here's the thing is, uh, you know, brother, if I, if I became a hundred millionaire from NFT, uh, do you know what my job would be after that? it would be retirement. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like one of the incentives in my mind was to hit it big so I don't have to worry about that anymore. I don't have to go to a day job and things like that. And there's some people here listening right now probably that got the benefit of that, that, that actually were able to cash in on that. But I feel like I feel like we were having so much fun because we knew the possibility of being able to ditch to nine to five uh, and make a bunch of money and, 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 and hit it big, hit a jackpot. So I, I, I don't get me wrong. I still am nostalgic to those mints and, you know, you know, midnight, you know, crazy different drops and stuff like that, that happened. Um, but at the same time, if, if money wasn't involved in it whatsoever, I don't think we would have had as much fun. If the gambling element of it there, I, I don't think we'd be having so much fun. And no chance. I, I, yeah, I, t I totally, totally, totally agree with you there. No, no doubt about it. All right. So let's, we, we just detoured for a little bit. We're going to come back, come back a little bit back in now at this point, but, um, uh, web three, when you started, so we know we, you started with top shot. What did that look like for you? T take us back to a similar time. So what did that look like for you in terms of started off, you went into ETH projects and you, I, you know, I know you, you have your a different way of thinking, which is what, what's so awesome about you. So how did you start to look at projects? Like, do you, your background are you naturally looking at narratives and stories and what's checking out and if you are doing that how does that play into a project that you want to mint and flip or a project you want to trade like how do you think about all that how does ryan think about that specifically yeah so i um i'll, I'll be f f frank with you guys i am pretty much a serial holder so if i my mint into a project it very rarely is it something that i see that i'm like Oh man, I'm gonna flip that in 30 minutes. Uh, and as, as a lot of people in in MVHQ would be able to understand, uh, they've seen me lose money that way <laughs> um, uh, by not doing it. Uh, so I I am I'm an emotional trader. I I resonate with things. I resonate with narratives and storylines for different projects. 
So I, I see things that I like. I see things that, that speak to me. I see genuine, um, genuine figures, genuine people. Obviously, I've had the position here at MBHQ to interview a lot of projects and, and listening to the excitement of someone. If someone comes in and share, maybe they've been on a, um, God, uh, you know, a bender of, of, of doing these AMAs for, you know, the past two weeks to get excitement in the project. And they come in and act like this is just another AMA, but they come in and they, they act like, Hey, this is an AMA. I get to, I get to speak to someone about my project that's coming out. This is awesome. And they have some excitement. That's always something that that's always like a narrative that I've always appreciated was, was people who really, really acted like they were, um, excited to be here, excited to, to be talking about their project. So that was always something that I really looked into. Um, I, you know, when it first came to NFTs, I didn't get it. I thought they were stupid. I thought it was the dumbest thing in the world. Um, coming from sports cards to top shot didn't make sense to me. And then I kind of, uh, slowly understood the gaming element of it. And then that slowly went into the art element of it, which slowly went into like maybe the PFP element of it, the community, the token gate kind of thing. So it slowly kind of built up. So I slowly started to understand things. And, um, you know, other narratives were, um, you know, storytelling, good storytelling. I mean, you look at the projects that are still around, still doing well. I think they've been, um, you know, really uh, blessed to have created and continue to create great narrative structure in their storytelling. I think, uh, Board Ape Yacht Club obviously is the obvious one to go with. Um, so, and I won't get any critical of Board Ape Yacht Club because uh, I don't want people to come at me. But, um, <laughs> but no, uh, I, I think there's been some some great narrative structures uh, uh, throughout story uh, and storytelling uh, through a lot of these projects, and that's just always something that I looked forward to. Uh, I like. I like being entertained. I like being emotionally resonated with. I like I like to um, invest with my heart uh, as well as my my head, uh, and sometimes my heart gets in the way. Uh, so so I always looked for um, those kinds of intangibles uh, when it came to to uh, projects and things like that. How far out do you think some of these projects, not just not just board games, but like beyond? On. How far out do you think some of these projects are scripting out of curiosity? Oh, I would say anywhere from a week to a year. I, I honestly, <laughs> that's, that's the one thing. And, and, and I don't know, man, I think some of, some of these, it depends on what we're talking about. Are we talking about new projects. Are we talking about older projects. Because yeah, pick your, pick your poison. And, and what, what stands out to me is that like, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in what you were saying about a week to year uh, and, and curious, was curious to hear what you were going to say, because part of the challenge is right. Like you can't script, it would be very hard to script for like three years or something, right? Not knowing like what's going on in the world and AI and whatever, whatever on earth will come back, come in that'll like change the narrative of things, right? Just pick your poison. It seems like it would be hard to go beyond that, right? But even with you saying a week to a year, uh, that's probably pretty illustrative, right? There's probably, <laughs> and, and, Izuki, and, and you know, I don't even know if it's Zuki, but like something on one, on one end of the spectrum, right? There's many of these new projects that, at the, these days are probably like a week at best, right? They're living week to week and they're like, oh, what are we going to do next now? Um, <laughs> only because the community is requesting what's next. Yeah. And I think the other thing is that how does things play out within the first week or two? Cause I could tell you now that if, if board Ape yacht club like fell flat and didn't sell out or didn't become popular, they it wouldn't be as big as it is now. Uh, so, so I, I, I like, and don't get me wrong. I know that they did a lot of stuff and, and, blah, blah, blah. But, and sorry for the background, I'm on my back porch here. But, um, I know that, you know, a lot of times it happens by accident and they just fall into it. So it seems like a lot of times these projects will be like, Oh, Hey, we sold out and we made a lot of money. So let's go ahead and write out a plan. Let's go ahead and write out a narrative, like, like a structure, a storytelling structure. Let's go ahead and, and like backfall into it. Uh, and I'm sure that happened a lot early on and I'm sure that happens still a lot today. Um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, no, I, um, I, and I'm sorry, I, I lost the thread again as low. Okay. Do, do you see though, Ryan, like 
I, I totally get you. And like, they have to make it past the first obstacle, right? Which is the mint yeah. out in the first week or the, but even in like the beginning, right? When they have like their landing page and they have like, you know, their, their Twitter account. Do you see a difference even there in terms of like the sophistication of narrative that exists across projects? Have you seen any development, you know, over the past year or two as, as like time goes by, like, do you see any difference there? Like a substantial difference there in the terms of like narrative quality at early, like in the, for instance? Early on, like, 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 I, I and here's the crazy thing is that there was a time, I mean, the time and, and like, it's been a while since I've minted an NFT. Uh, that's one thing. Uh, it, and I think it, a lot of people were probably in the same boat because it's been a lot, a long time since there's been an NFT worth minting. Um, but there was a time period there where it seemed like every mint page didn't even care about a story structure. It almost seemed like, like things like like the story structure stuff went away. It's like okay, well, we already have these established projects in the space, you know, the Azuki's, the things like this. Uh, and if it wasn't an anime PFP project, it seems like they all went away from that, and like all of the mint pages were the same. Like it almost it's like the same and main. Squarespace or, or one of the sites were, were smart. They would have come up with like an NFT yeah. template where like the middle section on, you know, in, in the flow is a roadmap and you just type in what your elements are like identical template, like what you're saying. Well, based on, based on what they looked like, someone was making money off the template uh, because they were, they were mass producing them. It seemed like, and, and, and so I think that that was a, it, it was a fear. Because I'll, I'll tell you one of the reasons why I have never been really involved with a project or never really want it to is because of the liability of having to keep it up with it. Because there are, I feel like a lot of projects now want to create something, obviously to make money, and want to be like, you know, no, no roadmap, all vibes, you know, yada, yada, yada. And they don't want to keep up with having to write, you know, a new, you know, uh, a new thing next next year or, or whatever. You know, they're like to relate this back to screenwriting. There are really, really great miniseries out there, right? There are amazing miniseries that I don't want to see another season of because it's a miniseries. It's not supposed to have that. And I feel like that was kind of a trend for a long time. Is that like? here's a project here's a pretty picture or maybe here's a funny vibe to go with it where we all talk like goblins or something like that uh and and that's that's what we go with and we don't have to and and i guess you know if you look at it in the way that is creating a narrative but you're doing that through your community you're relying on your community to build that narrative instead of you be able to building that narrative so you're hoping that it just kind of becomes some organic thing that that goes along but um you know, I, I don't think there's any planning that goes into that. That's something that that you have to. That's when good marketing comes into play, rather rather than good like storytelling or good narrative production. Uh, I feel like you know, if you can create a project like that and uh, have the community go viral with it, and you know, meme it to death, uh, then maybe it lives on somehow. Uh, it, 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 it and the story comes later. I, I think. Pudgy Penguins is probably uh, something like that. I don't think, I mean, we know for a fact that Pudgy Penguins wasn't idealistically what it was supposed to be when it first started. And I feel like that kind of moved into where it is now. Uh, all, all based, uh, back, you backfilled all that in. Like that wasn't something that they started out to, to be. So it's really tricky, by the way, right? Because we heard him say, you know, it, on the show, I heard him say at least like that they kind of pulled back on the roadmap, right? So yeah. historically, it was you know, pudgies and little pudgies and fishing rods and so on and so forth, and we constantly have to keep create action. Granted, it was a different time, right, where everybody wanted nonstop action, but sure. you know, one thing after another to kind of keep action going to make the community happy, and and that was it was reverse engin- reverse engineered, right? And and then he comes, of course, at a different time. He's like, no, 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 that's not how we're going to do things, right? We're going to very, very much manage expectations. We're only going to do so much. We're going to do it well when we do do it, but it's not going to be that frequent. And, you know, this is a similar concept to like art. And we were speaking with OSF and, and similar concept there of had the initial project and initial project didn't go well. And now what do I do? And in his case, fortunately, like felt allegiance to the community and that kind of carried into the next project, which got airdropped and, and you're kind of, you know, you're, you're find and on your way at that point but this allegiance thing it's really tricky it seems like right like this allegiance thing to when you release a project and you mint out like you 
there are people that even if they know that there's a risk that it goes to zero in theory, right? There's expectations that you're going to like try and like put something out and put effort into something. And I'm trying to like think through that, like where this goes and, and, and the midterm and, and, and so forth. Like everybody who's part of one of these projects, myself included, I'm sure you ever like has an expectation what a sticky roadmap looks like, right? Like there has to be something going on there to some extent, even if you're at the extreme end of it and it's art, right? Like you still have to have a narrative that exists of like, you know, what it is you're trying to build and engaging with the community and doing something that exists, right? Even even at that end of the spectrum. So I wonder if there's like a line that exists at, as we're trying to figure out like regulatory and what's happening there. There's some line that comes up that's like, if you are left of this line, you just have not done enough NFT project, or you know maybe it'll be called a membership project at some point. You have not done enough for your project to actually support and defend people having invested in it originally. You are outside of what is okay. I don't know. I'm just making it up as an example. Do you think that's yeah. possible? Like, is there a line that exists here? Oh, there's absolutely a line, and 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 I'm gonna, but I, I'm gonna use a colloquialism that I just made up off the top of my head. But uh, if I got hired to be a bricklayer. And every day, my boss, or every week, my boss paid me to be a bricklayer. At, at the end of the week, he's going to want to see some bricks that have been laid, mm-hmm. right? He's going to want to see some kind of progress in what I've done. Uh, and and I and I feel like a lot of of these projects, uh, Web three gaming is one that I think is, is a big one in this. Um, are utilizing their uh, investors as a Kickstarter. It is a glorified Kickstarter. They said, hey, let's start a company. You give us money. And then at the end of it, uh, you know, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll produce this company. We'll produce X company and, and blah, 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 blah. But it the, 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 the gets confusing and, and interesting. And you've seen it time and time again with like Doodles. Uh, and uh, I think uh, even um, shit, what are the owls called again? God. Moonbirds, you're talking about? Yeah, thank you, Moonbirds. <laughs> Why couldn't I remember that? But you we seem like... like Alice also, at this point. They've been a little <laughs> bit dis- discredited lately, but it's all good. But you see these CEOs of these companies uh, kind of take a, you know, it's not about the floor price. It's not about the floor price. You know, uh, you, you guys aren't investors. Um, you know, legally, you can't be investors, blah, blah, blah. Then what the hell? Then why did, did I pay, a, you know, $2,000 for this? Why did I pay $6,000 for this? Why? have I been, you know, investing so much in this community and things like that? Um, if you don't see that person as an investor, then you are looking at things in a really bad way. Uh, so I, I think, I think the, 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 the thread gets lost there a lot. Uh, and I might have just done it as well. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so, so I, I think that it's disingenuous to, to, to not see it that way. And, and for some of these people, and, and one of my favorite things about your conversation uh, you know, with Punchy Penguins was he literally said that he constantly thinks of his holders and the floor yeah. price. Uh, yeah. and, and, and I think that that's, that's a great service to his people uh, and to, to his investors, but again, legally not an investor. So I, I, I think that there's, there has to be some kind of, of uh, you have to move the flag a little bit. You have to show progress in what you're making and uh, in, 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 in what you're building and in, in what makes sense. And, and I think a lot of these guys don't do that. They're just kind of clowning around. I mean, it could be both, right? Like it could be you get utility and value of something. Also, we are investors. Like it, it could be both things. So like there's, the, there's this frame on this, which is I know people are investors and I do care about that. But also there's other ways to give people value, like having an incredible community, having education, having access to things. That, like it could be both of those. And that's totally viable. But it seems like, It seems like it needs to just be made a little bit clearer. And then what happens as a result of that is we have less project, fewer shitty projects being created um, with bad intentions. But for the ones that are created, they're higher quality things, right? And and so now we're picking between a higher quality batch of projects that we get to pick from. Not as many, not as much like absolute madness maybe that exists if there is a line that's drawn. But those are they're all high quality. And now we're picking between those to, to figure out which is the right one, which is the right community. And oh yeah, by the way you know, we are all still quite early, so it probably wouldn't even matter at that point what you picked because it would all probably be pretty good. So who is, who's Ryan, who's in your mind, who's doing this well right now? Who's who, other than, you know, the Pudgy Penguins example, like you said, who's balancing this well between 
understanding the investor perspective that it exists, having a good narrative, having enough frequency of activity, not overextending that activity. Like who, who's doing this well, would you say, beyond maybe the obvious? Any, anybody stand out? I, I think people are going to roll their eyes because it's usually my PFP when I'm not smoking cigars on Twitter. But the Kaiju Kings, I really think Dots, oh, Dots is doing a fantastic job at keeping the narrative uh, with what they're doing. They're weaving storytelling into things. They're weaving gaming and not even like a, we're going to do some crazy random metaverse thing and inoperability 3D, you know, come visit, blah, blah, blah. They're, they're just doing uh, so many awesome little things and their vibe. Like, I think, I think it's it, very early on in, in Web3, like a, a project's vibe was so important and blah, blah, blah. But they really do have this very chill vibe where it's like, hey, I'm the I'm the I'm I'm the the project leader here. I'm the owner of this project. I am going to take this uh, and and make this my life's work uh, for as long as I can. And I'm going. To, I'm not in a hurry. We're not in a hurry. Uh, and we're going to keep building. And I don't think that they've stopped building anything. They, they they've literally had something they were working towards and with like direct finish line and deliverables the entire time they've minted. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, they minted pretty high, and they, uh, you know, were at, a, a, like, I think, a 6 ETH floor, and now they're at, like, a 0.5 ETH floor. Uh, so, like, they've definitely seen a fall from grace, like everyone else has, but that entire time, they've been literally delivering new things every month, uh, whether it be some new merch line or... Some like 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 merch they've dropped, or some new like mini game that they released that somehow ties into the narrative they've done. It just it just is a really great project and a lot of good people. And they also are super hip hop oriented. Huge love hip hop. So like like they'll release like a few tracks every few days. Uh, and and I don't know. I mean, I'm also a big nostalgic Pixel fan. So like the art really resonates with me. So I would definitely say that that. The, the Kaju Kings is winning it out for me right now. It's where I have most of my eggs uh, and have for a long time. Uh, and, and it's just because, again, that's a, a project creator that I think is constantly been delivering. And maybe he's not worrying about floor price, but he is certainly putting so much work into things where it makes me look, it makes it look like he's definitely trying to get a return, uh, getting people who made an investment a return on their profit. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I, I know there's another project you and I talked about that I know you think is also a, a is and was a very maybe more was a very good narrative. Did not at all have the same outcome necessarily, and I think many of us in here are quite familiar with the project. But I know EtherWorks is is a is a project that you were a very big fan of their narrative and how they approach it and everything. But we, as we all know, we did not. With the greatest result, I guess, in this, in you know, in, in in the mindset and frame of most people, Can, what happened there, in your opinion? Like, why why do you think that was so good? To be honest with you, and why did that stand out to you as such a good project? And so, what do you think happened there? Like, like where where do we go wrong there compared to Kaiju Kings, as an example? I know it's not apples to apples in the same project type, but but still. So I think at the time, Ether Orcs was um, it was dungeon crawling RPG, right, and. Uh, I don't know how many of you out there play RPGs, but I guarantee you it's a fraction of you who play dungeon crawling RPGs, right? It's just not. <laughs> it, it's a very niche, I feel like, kind of gameplay. And one of the things about Ether Orcs is like they've created such a great community and they got people excited and they it was a free mint and you know the price went up. The, the other thing is that it was really revolutionary in the way smart contracts were being done. So I think the 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 whole raiding and staking and and leveling up and all that like that was, from my understanding, a brand new process. So it was really revolutionary. I said, "Oh, this is what Web three gaming can be. This can, well, this is what you know. This is what what it is. Like we we can we can do a lots of these things like this." And I think that's why. Ether Orcs really popped off. The problem is, is I think eventually the, you know, people were like, this is boring. This gameplay is boring to me. And it's because 
it's a dungeon crawling RPG. <laughs> and those aren't always super, they're not, it's just like, um, there was another project called Heroes of Evermore, and it, I have my issues with it as well for other reasons, but it was a MUD, uh, which is, you know, a text-based RPG. Uh, and if you don't like MUDs, if you don't like text-based RPGs, you're definitely not going to like this project. And, you know, a lot of people lost a lot of money because they, they put their money into it. So I think over time, a lack of interest in the game created a demand for the people who had invested money to, you know, have the devs do something. Can the devs please do something, right? And I think that that really just turned into some... The devs were like, we, they want us to make improvements to a, a game that we never signed on for. Like, well, this, this is what we, we made. This is the contract that we did. This is the, the innovation that we created. And I think they just got tired of it and they moved on. Uh, and they and also, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say, and it seems like the community's taking over. That was actually, again, I think rugging is awful. I hate it. It's terrible. But I think one of the best things that uh, uh, you know devs that do want to move on and, and and quote unquote rug can do is to give the keys to the community. And I I still have the Etherworks channel up on my Discord, but it seems like they are giving the keys back to the community and having the community decide how they want to do it um, and, and kind of making kind of a community source project, which is probably what it should have been in the first place. So there were, I remember originally there were community source and like remnants that were in there of somebody who built the UI. And I can't, yep. like, there were a couple of things that were like that, but that project was also notorious because the devs didn't have royalty piece that existed either originally. And I think it got, if I remember right, like I think it got voted in, I think the community said, no, 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 guys, yep. like, you need to make something because we need you to keep going here. And, and so maybe is this like partly what you said and then partly like the entry of blur and maybe not just blur, right. But down market plus blur plus, plus everything that aim. I hate, I hate to go full circle on this one, but <laughs> this became a little bit of, of partly what you said, a partly like the community pushing and going outside of what the vision was and them getting a little bit tired and partly also, you know, profit motive to some extent, even though supposedly they're retired, maybe that is a thing also. And so I, I think back to the original conversations and AMAs that they had in that community, and, and I agree with you, it was really well made and great narrative, niche, but all those things. But I think back to the original conversations, and I don't know if anybody else remembers, and I'm not picking on them, but, I, but I'm just using this more as like a lens Part of what we talk about on here, right, is, you know, we have a lot of traders, investors in this community, right? And so I'm trying to use this as a lens to rethink about future opportunities, investments, and otherwise within within Web3. Original conversations that that those devs had with EtherOrx was, we are, you know, we're retired. We, we've done more than well enough careers. And now we're here doing this as a passion project of something that we always wanted to do. Uh, and we're really, really motivated by this. And just so you know, we're, you know, we're never going to leave this project, right? We're like fully behind this project and we're never going to leave it. And I, like, that's how at least I recall the conversations going is something in that direction. I'm obviously, you know, paraphrasing pretty, pretty imperfectly, but something like that. And yet we still find ourselves here, right? So, I mean, if nothing else, like I, I know they had good intent. I don't think there's any malintent. And I think it's a combination of what you said and, and maybe a combination of royalties and everything. I'm just also wondering if there's a lesson here that exists where like, I know passion and excitement and seriousness is a proxy for like how solid a project is, but one, we need to start looking at projects and, and maybe weighing more heavily the risk that a project shuts down, even if we're so, so, so confident in, in the devs and in, in the founders, maybe we have to weigh a little bit more heavily that a project might shut down, even if they seem super serious or, you know, or number two, Maybe we just have to change our, you know, our, our outcomes and weighted outcomes and, and, and what we can expect from, I don't know. But I think there's some, something to take from that example too, because I agree with you. I think it was one of the best, one of the better projects that, that was out there narrative wise and otherwise, and yet it still didn't land at the end of the day for people who had a lot of gumption. So I don't know. Do you, do you remember those conversations originally? Am I just making that up totally? Maybe I'm making No, you're not making it up totally at all. And, and, I, and I think that there are, there are. I mean, let's just go back to the same gaming and, 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 and shit, even movies. There are creators who, you know, some legendary creators have created amazing things and they've created duds. Uh, and, and, you know, or, or, or uh, I guess more, more perfectly for this scenario is 
creators, who, you know, directors who stop directing, you know, you eventually are going to retire uh, eventually and, and you get burnt out. And, you know, these are people who didn't, I, I, and again, I'm not trying to take any, any, I lost a ton of money when they rugged. So, I mean, I have a lot of money in ether orcs. I wasn't one of the people that got in really early when it was a free mint or anything. I, I have, I invested heavily in ether orcs uh, from my standpoint. Uh, so I, I just think that like the space is so new and there are so many things that people aren't taking in consideration when they get involved in a project or start a project that they, and I kind of like mentioned this earlier, again, one of the reasons why I would never do a project is because you have to continue to deliver. I may love developing games. I may love writing scripts, but if you told me for the rest of my life, I had to sit here and write a script, fuck you, man. Like I am not doing that at all. Like I, I like, I get inspiration when I want to, I write when I want to, I write when I can, uh, you know, I, I do stuff like that. I, I do comedy when I can jokes come to me when, when they want to, I, I cannot do it 24 seven. It's just not something you can do. So it seems like, again, euphoria, they were excited. It was new. They were, they were spreading this, you know, this cheer and trying to get people excited about it. And they didn't realize again, that when when people invest so much fucking money and we're talking like, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into an ecosystem and, you know, you look at it one day and you're like, holy shit, so many people are relying on us to deliver them some kind of return on investment here. And that's one of the reasons why, and we kind of talked about play to earn gaming, the idea of buying gaming assets for such a high price is not necessarily the greatest idea because now you're not you're not playing the video game to play a video game you're playing the video game because you're hoping it you know gives you a return on your investment so i, I just it, it 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 turned into it turned into someone's passion which turned into having to you know make the line go up and it completely def- probably deflated the the creators and they just had to step away so I, I, I again, I, I, I do not believe there is a good reason to, to rug, but I think that their intentions got the best of them, and you know they eventually took something they loved, and you know they, it got pulverized with having to 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 show a return. Yeah, yeah, that that makes sense, and you know, I mean, just connecting that back on what's standing out to me, like you know, as an investor, is I think I'm going to take. Two takeaways from two two takeaways from this for, for in my mind, right? One is maybe we need to put more emphasis if you're an investor, not not a trader, which we'll get to in a second, but if you're an investor, maybe we need to start putting more emphasis three on finding marathon runners. People who are proven, who know what it's like actually having a startup and therefore know what it's gonna feel like and the vision and the possible scenarios that can happen and down cycles and, and all but already know what that's going to feel like, right? So even if they're not like the best marketer necessarily to start off and the project doesn't just fly and go, you know, 100x in, in, in the first week or several weeks, a marathon runner. And so like, I know everyone wants to turn, you know, turn faster, of course, faster profits and, and better for traders, but assuming you're an investor, right? Maybe we need to look for more marathon runners at the end of the day. And that's a, that's a more solid approach if you're an investor. And then on the flip side, if you're a trader, just want to narrow your time horizon, Maybe we need to account for more, you know, if somebody's not a marathon runner and front run that. Say, okay, well, it seems like everybody thinks that this might be a marathon runner and they may be capable based on the way they're talking and otherwise to go four years or five years. But maybe there's a much better chance that they're actually not going to do that. And I don't want to be, you know, the last person standing holding the bag. So maybe I need to catch that earlier and, and, and weight this a little bit more heavily than I've, than I've done so in the past. So I don't know. I'm, I'm just trying to take it away. But and as you then start to look at like who's in the space, like some people who are not historically marathon runners, meaning like they, they haven't, you know, had a startup in the past or, or whatever, which is fine. And some of those have been very, very successful, right? Like you as an example and otherwise, I, I don't know if those were, I'm not, I'm not quite sure if those were startup people before, or if they've had previous businesses, but, um, you know, they, some of them have such disproportionate success that it's not even a question in anybody's mind, right? They're going to stay with the project done, problem solved, right? Like made hundreds of millions of dollars on mints and, and royalties, like you're going to stay basically, right? Yeah. Um, anybody who's not that outcome, right? Yeah, it, it's, and it's hard to, 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 to quantify or it's hard to pick those kinds of people out because, I mean, I, I would say that people probably thought 
Alex Becker was a good bet. He seemed like the kind of guy who was a marathon runner and would do anything, right? And I'm sure you ask most of the people involved in his project that, you know, not necessarily positive experience for them. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's really hard to do. But I, I'll, I will say that, you know, if we continue to see Web3 continue on and we continue to see success in projects and, you know, this is just a bear market, we're just experiencing, you know, uh, you know, just some downs, some lows right now. There are projects that you minted and there are projects that you purchased and you flipped that have not stopped, that are still working and that are still building and that are still creating a community and still creating a product and a company that you have completely forgotten about. I mean, there are so many projects. There are projects that I, I know. Mean, I give an example off the top of my head. It's going to be the most strange uh, reference that we've probably ever had on this show and maybe any. There's a project that like a, a year and a half, projects called, the project's called Tomodachi, and it minted, and a, this is a year and a half ago, maybe even two years ago, and the thing never took off. I, I, this is what, it was one of those, pro, it was unfortunate. Those are really, really nice people, and it was one of those projects where like, maybe not like the most powerful marketers necessarily, and you know the, the project launched and they couldn't mint out and then they lowered the price and spin and spin and spin. They couldn't quite figure it out. And eventually they cut the supply and you know then you have your installed community and you're on your way. But those people, even before Pudgy Penguins was doing it, and it, like very heavily on the roadmap was the concept of plushies, fair market. They continue to kind of communicate. They've executed on these things. They've delivered on them. People seem to like them. It's not a big community, by the way. This is like a not, you know, it's, it's, it's still niche-ish, let's call it, right? But people like it, apparently. Um, and it's not worth much, right? It's it's worth if it's worth 0.01, I'd be surprised to be honest with you, right? It's not worth much. But just as an example, like what you're saying, like maybe not the most powerful marketers, but very clear sense of like where they were going, and they're still there floating around right now. And you know, I'm not saying that this project particularly will, will be successful and be you know at all suggesting that. But to your point, there are these projects that are floating out there that are doing exactly what they say, exactly as expected, and may just be not quite as good marketers. Example. Yeah, and, and 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 when we don't care about them, uh, a lot of people don't care about them, which is interesting because you know we say that you know being a good you know a good a good uh, you know running a good project and running and, and, and constantly delivering uh, you know is positive for project, but a lot of times that's not what people are looking for. People are looking for a quick buck, of things to make make them value that that they don't see. I mean, there's a, I could name a hundred of them, but there's a project called Multiverse VM, and every week I get an update. Uh, that they tell tell us oh, like uh, we just mess with the fog experience in our to help atmospheric depth blah 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 I mean they they're constantly building uh, there's another one and this this is almost like yours uh, I, I minted like a, a shit ton of these um, Gorilla Nimbus is one of the first real NFTs that I really like heavy minted on uh, two and a half years ago it's these three guys from Italy. And they uh, have our friends with a comic book artist, and they've created this comic book. They are constantly like they're they're not marketing, they're not showing, they're not telling a ton of stuff, but they're they're constantly. I mean, they're constantly uh, building something. They're they're building. A, they're working with a, a video game company and and to release something in Sandbox. They're releasing a new issue to their their comic book, and like we're talking like they get like ten likes on 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 twitter on their tweets right but people are still building on that project and then I mean, the value like like we're we're traders we're investors in here right so these are the ones that are actually adhering they are actually proving out to be the marathon runners even through the bear market they're still going it's not just a passion project they're going like top hat is saying in here with subway rats right like 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 things I are developing up, but yet they're not good <laughs> marketers right like that's that's their flaw they're not very good marketers they can't create hype they, they don't know how to piece it where do those projects go? How do we weigh these projects like in the scheme of investing in them in our portfolio? Do we just buy these projects and hope that they can solve marketing? If you're an investor, buy these projects, hope they can solve marketing, and then you know, in a couple of years it's gonna look like the most brilliant thing ever. And and you know, it's just low downside, good amount of upside, and just pray? Like, like how, how does this fit in? That that's a hundred percent what I I, I hope, because uh, even uh, THC mentioned fucking subway rats. I owe, I have like fifty of those motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> literally, didn't had no idea until the other uh, other day. 
uh, I was with uh, Naruto in voice chat. This is a few weeks ago, months ago at this point, but I was like, I'm going through my hidden folder, seeing if there's, you know, in, in, any kind of updates or anything. And sure enough, Subway Rats has a whole fucking game. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, I had no idea. So, so like, it, it, it's in my mind, it's, it's one of those things. It's like, it's like the hype seems to be, you know, if these big time traders don't get involved in these projects or these big influencers get involved in these projects, these projects don't become successful. They don't do anything. And I honestly think that it's going to take, like, like I, I think I think that 99% of the projects we're talking about will not, you know, see some kind of increase or, or huge breakthrough or whatever. But it, it's going to take people realizing that, like, short-term, like, hype gains uh, are nothing and that there are people who are actually, like, doing really good work in this space and really building great products that they have literally no interest in whatsoever that they need to focus on. And, and I, I don't think it, it could very almost... There's like there's like a like a ninety five percent chance that that we do not see a narrative switch to this. Uh, but I, I I honestly do think that I think there are a lot of people building projects that deserve that kind of attention. A and B, please please for the love of God help my bags. Like what, please. What do we do? Do we do we go in and I'd the advisory services for marketing to be able to push the thing out effectively? Do we go in and pool and acquire the, the game and like acquire it as a bunch of marketers instead so it can get, get the awareness that it deserves? Like, I don't know what to do in these cases because as you're saying, these are great projects that are, I was just checking in the background, no joke, I was checking in the background to see whether House of Goblins still existed and there was still communication and they still actually have chat going. Like despite, I don't know if you remember that one, like, Despite you know the the mint going awry and everything going down, like those guys just continued to build in the background, right? Even though people were were poo pooing on it constantly and, and like still building in the background. What, what I just don't know what to do with these things, but they're but it's awesome, awesome what yeah. they're doing. It's awesome that they're still developing. They the, what's that? Who's the who's the bar rescue guy? Uh, tapper. We need <laughs> we need a tapper of NFT projects. <laughs> Fuck, let it. Me, let me jump in, and I can fucking just change the project, man. Like, I would love to do that. I, I think that's great. Another one that came to mind was Ether Jump. Ether Jump has been building this entire time. We partnered with them. Bibi HQ did, and and their, their their product was fun as hell. Me and JJ, I spent hours and hours trying to make like an Ether Ether uh, Jump level that was like hard and, and kind of like Mario Maker. And and again, they just keep building because they don't. Their their product isn't about the floor. It's about you know developing a, a cool project. So so I I think we I I would love to do a series, and I've, I've joked about it before. Poop or not joked about it, but talked about it called Eyes Backwards, where we go back and we look at projects that have been maybe rugged or maybe abandoned, but also projects that haven't been that have been silently working this entire time that you just don't think about. Um, so, uh, I, I, I love, I love, I love that we focus shifted on that because I think those kind of, all these projects that we've named, they absolutely need the attention and love from all of you, especially the ones that I mentioned that I had, uh, bags for again, I want to reemphasize, uh, if you heard any of that, anyone listening now, go buy a bunch and, and raise the floor price, <laughs> not financial advice. <laughs> We couldn't figure out that's where you were going with Kaiju Kings either. By the way, we did. We did. Oh no, Kaiju Kings is a real like uh, Kaiju Kings does need a lot of respect, and they do. But Kaiju Kings, O dots. You go look at his Twitter. Like I, he, he very frequently says, "Hey, I have ten baby Kaiju Kings here. If you're new to NFTs, uh, and and you know you're 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 not like a flipper, come reach out to me. I would love to have you in the community." And he'll literally just give out them to just people who want to get involved so like like he, he's he's a big time builder big time uh it, it's good, just gonna take some ogs to get involved to, to to lift that up and i think it's happening here soon again not financial advice please don't buy one because i mentioned it but but that's a real one uh, and again these other ones that i've mentioned too are real ones that are building but i like i i, I doubt for you know again 99 percent of them that anything's gonna happen so please don't don't take that with a grain of salt <laughs> <laughs> fair enough um, want to be cognizant of time, right? It's absolutely just awesome episode, fun. We we went down the line, we meandered, we did everything. Um, really, really, you know, kind of an unprecedented episode that we've had, man. It was just so, so good. So really appreciate you coming on. 
everyone who's who's live, who's chatting and sharing all the good nostalgic projects and otherwise. Really appreciate you all and everyone listening on recorded too. Appreciate you. Hey everyone, a similar time next week. Thanks so much. And Ryan, thank you again. Really, really awesome stuff. Yeah, man. Have a great night. Thank you so much.